Uh, thank you, Ciarán Corla. Taoiseach, workers and families continue to be fleeced by a cost of living crisis that's uh, out of control. People's finances are pushed to the very brink. They're hammered by sky-high energy bills, soaring food bills, runaway rents, mortgage interest rate hikes, and a cost of living crisis that is hitting them from all sides. Almost a quarter of household gas customers found themselves in arrears in the first three months of this year. And as energy credits run out, the number in electricity arrears is increasing again. And just so as we're clear about the scale of what's happening, that means 160,399 domestic uh, customers in gas arrears and 199,790 domestic electricity arrears. It's an absolutely staggering situation. And yes, Taoiseach, you oppose Sinn Féin's proposal to cut and cap rip-off energy bills. You also blocked our plan to provide mortgage relief for struggling homeowners. You refused any plans to cut rent or ban rent increases. And yet households remain under huge pressure, and yet your government sits on your hands. So tonight, Sinn Féin bring, brings forward a plan for real action on food and grocery bills. And I think the government should back this plan, Taoiseach. Inflation, as you know, in Irish supermarkets is the highest ever recorded, and shoppers are set to see their annual grocery bills rise by 1,200 euros. That's a very big sum, and people's incomes just won't stretch that far in many cases. So many people are going hungry, pensioners are skipping meals, and with the school holidays now fast approaching, some families don't know how they will feed their children this summer. So this can't continue, I am sure you will agree, Taoiseach. The plan from Sinn Féin has essentially three elements. Firstly, it would ensure that savings made by supermarkets due to falling input costs are passed on to consumers by cutting grocery prices. Secondly, it would instruct the Competition and Consumer Protection Commission to investigate possible price gouging in the sector. And crucially, it would allow for an increase in social welfare and pension rates to protect people from food poverty. And these measures would make a real difference, Taoiseach, in the here and now for people, because you can't expect people to wait five months until the budget for relief. Kicking the can down the road, turning a blind eye to the huge pressure people are under is not an option. So I'm asking that you take action to shield households from this latest hit in the cost of living storm. Time and again, we've brought forward measures, and every time, Taoiseach, you've turned your face against them, you've rejected every solution that has been offered up. The Ibrahim August the Chauli Togair came out of Haven Custis Marak Tala, Cod Ata and Rialtus Edenov, Ni Feder Ledini Fana Kuig Kuig V Dunvoshed, Tokawar Ektasild Uhu Anish. So there is an immediacy in all of this, Tishuk, as I'm sure you will agree. The government must take sensible, targeted measures to give support to those that need it, because people are finding it difficult to stay afloat now, and they need help now. So my questions to you, Taoiseach, are these. Firstly, will you back Sinn Féin's plan to cut food costs that will come before the House this evening? And what else, Taoiseach, do you propose to do to help families weather the storm of this cost of living crisis? And I make specific reference again to the hundreds of thousands of households that now find themselves in gas and electricity arrears. Thank you, Deputy MacDonald. Please, please. Thanks, um, thanks, Deputy. Just at the outset, on behalf of the government, I want to acknowledge that we are facing a cost of living crisis. Uh, we've seen inflation reach very high levels in the last year or so. Uh, thankfully, inflation is now slowing down, but that's not the same as prices falling. Uh, prices remain very high. Uh, and a lot of people and a lot of families are struggling with those bills, uh, and everyone in government understands that. And as I often say when it comes to any household bill, there are three elements to it. There's how much you get paid, how much you get to keep after tax, and how far the money goes. And government is helping with all of those aspects. 
So if we take pay, for example, we had an increase in the national minimum wage this year, which is above the rate of inflation for this year, and most people on low pay will get the knock-on increase that those on the lowest pay get. We also have a public sector pay deal, uh, and there will be a further pay deal, um, I imagine, negotiated before the end of the year. So that's the pay element, pay increasing. The second element is people being able to keep um, more of what they earn. Uh, the rent tax credit is an example of that. Uh, nearly 200,000 people have claimed that credit, many more can, uh, worth about 1,000 euros to a couple, um, 2,000 euros if you claim it over the two years, and that is helping people uh, with the cost of living, and of course reduction in income tax as well, worth about 800 euros a year uh, to somebody uh, on the average income, 1,600 to a couple, and your party, uh, as you know, oppose that. Uh, and we're helping as well with reducing the cost of living, uh, reduction in the cost of childcare, a very significant one, for example, uh, at the start of this year, reductions in the cost of public transport, reductions in the cost of school transport, reductions in the cost of buying medicines. All of those things have been done in the past couple of months and are pure examples of what the government is doing uh, to help people with the cost of living. And it hasn't stopped there. Uh, you mentioned welfare, for example, which is in your motion um, before the House today. Uh, we had a 200 euro welfare payment to pensioners and people in receipt of weekly payments uh, that was paid last week, only last week, and that will help people with their bills and their arrears. And it doesn't stop there. In June, for example, there'll be an extra 100 euros for every child uh, in the country, and that's not means tested because we acknowledge that middle income families are struggling with the cost of living too. For those who need it the most, there's an increase in the back to school clothing and footwear allowance, paid at the same rate as last year, and every child will benefit from free school books in September. And again, that's for all families, including middle-income families, because we know they're, str they're struggling too. And then comes the budget when we can do more. So there isn't a month that doesn't pass, Deputy, when we aren't doing something to help people uh, with the cost of living, because we understand uh, that families are suffering uh, and people are struggling with, uh, with those bills. Um, in relation to uh, the price of groceries, which, which, which you mentioned, um, uh, Deputy, or rather Minister Richmond, will meet with the Retail Forum, uh, I think, tomorrow. Uh, and it's going to meet with producers like farmers the day after, and he'll be passing on a very clear message from government. Um, when input prices like energy costs went up, retailers increased their prices. That's understandable. Your, in, your input costs, costs go up, you have to pass on some of that increase to your customers. But when input costs go down, we expect you to pass on those reductions to, to your customers, and we're making that very clear uh, to, to the retailers, to the big supermarkets, to the shops, and also to the energy and gas companies. Um, you put prices up when your costs went up. Now your costs are coming down. We expect you to bring down prices. And we're starting to see a bit of that, uh, but not enough, not enough of that. Uh, so uh, in summary, Deputy, um, Thon Costas, Mark Thala, Anna Ard, Thal Lawn, Dini Alon, Chile Fee Brew, uh, Higamid, uh, Thal Tachiach, uh, Erfoil, Aaron Realtish, August Beg, Niasmo, Tachiach, Kikchak. So what is that additional? Uh, support that will be coming then? Because from, from your answer, um, and, and by the way, uh, the Unite Trade Union research published last week reflects that in real terms, uh, wages have in fact fallen by approximately 76 euro euros per week. But leaving that aside, I gave you the figures, 160,399 uh, households in gas arrears, almost 200,000 in electricity arrears. And yet, when I put the question to you and I ask you, what will you do now, in the here and now, uh, you answer me as though matters had been solved and resolved. This is a very expensive place to live in. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure you're aware of that. Ask anybody. This is a very, very expensive... That was the case before the cost of living spike hit households. So I want to ask you again, we're bringing forward a package of measures this evening in respect of groceries and food costs. Will you support that? If you don't support that, bar the minister sending encouraging messages, what are you going to do to ensure compliance from the retail sector and the energy sector? And what about all of these households in gas and electricity areas? What are you saying to them now, Taoiseach? What's the government proposing to do now?